Thanks everyone for coming to listen to me talk about one strand of research going on in the Transport Studies Unit at the moment. Um, what I'm going to talk about is a, is a strand of research that focuses essentially on the politics of debates about the sustainability of biofuels and particularly at European level whether or not biofuels are something that we should be ploughing ahead with. Um, so I'm sure you're all aware they've, they've caused a lot of controversy over the past 10 years or so. And this research draws on a lot of qualitative data, so data derived essentially from interviews with um, lots of different participants in debates about biofuels at, at EU level, so policymakers <coughs> in the European Commission, um, representatives of the re renewable energy industry, of the agricultural sector, of environmental campaigning groups, uh, wider scientific experts and so on. So one of the key sets of questions this research has tried to address fits within the Transport Studies Unit's governance and public policy research agenda. And really it's to do with how the European policy process works in issues relating to sustainable transport. Um, and the key question really is, well, why is it that biofuels came onto the political agenda in Europe in the, last, uh, in the early part of the last decade, given particularly that we've known how to do biofuels, we've known uh, technologically how to make them, how to run cars on them since the early 20th century, not the early 21st. So what was it that caused biofuels to shoot to the top of Europe's political agenda about 10 years ago? Um, and the findings of the research are quite interesting because the, the story that's routinely told by people I've interviewed is that actually about 10 years or so ago biofuels weren't just seen as a way of reducing greenhouse gas emissions from the transport sector, they were also seen as a way of increasing income and, and the sort of financial security of the agricultural sector in Europe because they provide a new market for farmers and as a way of increasing Europe's energy security by reducing our dependence on, on petrol and diesel, basically. Um, so what's interesting about biofuels in that respect is not so much that they were the best available solution to these problems at that particular time, roughly 10 years ago, but that they were the only solution which could be coupled onto all of these three problems at the same time. So they're a, a silver bullet in a sense. They're a solution to multiple problems simultaneously and that's what gave them that added sort of appeal in the political sphere about 10 years or so ago. The next set of questions that the research tries to address fit more neatly within TSU's energy and environment research agenda. This is where biofuels um, are seen less as a sort of silver bullet and more as a kind of Pandora's box that we shouldn't have opened. You know, they've, over the past 10 years or so, they've been associated with deforestation, with rising food prices, with land grabbing, with impacts on biodiversity, a whole host of things. Um, and so the key question that the research tried to address here was, well, how have policymakers at European level responded to all this controversy? How have they continued to defend the idea of having targets for biofuels in the face of all of these issues? And again, the research came up with some fairly interesting findings in the sense that whilst all these things are discussed and have been discussed for a number of years in the wider public sphere, and you know, there's a lot of um, discourse out there which says that biofuels do lead in, in certain cases to these negative impacts. Within the political sphere in Europe, actually, the, the, the exclusive focus of debates about whether or not biofuels are sustainable has been on greenhouse gas emissions. And so there's been an awful lot of work, uh, scientific work at, at the kind of European level undertaken, paid for by the European Commission, to try and calculate the carbon footprint of different biofuels as accurately as you possibly can using modelling. Um, and you might say, well, that, that's perfectly reasonable because first and foremost, biofuels are a climate change mitigation policy. So if, if they're not doing that, first and foremost, then, then they're not fulfilling their objectives. So we should focus on greenhouse gas emissions. But the argument I would make is that we ought to be cautious at least of allowing ourselves to think that greenhouse gas emissions are the be all and end all of what it means to have a sustainable transport system. And, and this applies not just to the debate about biofuels, but I think to the debate about sustainable road transport more broadly. There's a lot of initiatives at EU level that try to deal with greenhouse gas emissions from road vehicles, incentives for the electric vehicle industry, um, regulations that seek to reduce emissions from the current vehicle fleet amongst them. Biofuels obviously are, are just one of those initiatives. The argument I would make is, yes, of course, it's, it's important to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from the road transport sector, and we should be doing that. But should it be the sole objective of what we want to achieve with a sustainable transport system? 
And so this is where the, the work that I'm doing is, is heading in the next sort of year, 18 months or so. We want to really engage with actual policymakers, actual transport practitioners at a range of levels, national level, EU level, and try and get them, or try and help them to reframe these debates about what we actually want from a sustainable transport system over the next 10, 20, 30 years, beyond just mitigating climate change. Should we be developing a transport system, for instance, that actually helps us to, to provide more equal access to facilities, services and jobs, that generates synergistic benefits for public health, that reduces social exclusion, um, reduces noise and air pollution? Why can't we have a transport system that reduces greenhouse gas emissions compared to today and does some other things as well? So this is really about trying to change the terms of the debate so that we're not just focusing on carbon <coughs> accounting and actually focusing on, well, what benefits do we want our transport system to provide, not just to the environment, but to society and economies as well. And uh, that's the end of my, of my talk. Thanks for listening. <laughs>